Hi, everybody. Today we have global trends for shared hosting and website builders. We have speakers from different world regions. So stay with us and let's start with the speaker. Hi, Chibi. Hello. Okay. Well, we've seen uh, 2020, the year of the pandemic here in Spain, there was the confinamiento. I, I don't know the English word, but they send all the people to their home. And there, at that time, we, we saw a very, very high increase in domain registrations and hosting registrations. But I uh, can tell about 70% uh, of increase, uh, but very, very much. What we've seen past year to 2021, it's a decrease of that. It, it was impossible that <laughs> the, the hosting service uh, domain registration will be so big because the normality was already here. But we've seen a good uh, renewal rates. So what we think about is that there was a very big increase and the most of the project that was created during the, the pandemic has been maintained because the people now see the importance of having a website because here in Spain, many business uh, have to close during that time. And the solution that they saw was at least having a website. And we have seen that many of that kind of business are keeping their domains like their hosting services. So what we've seen for the, the past year is a very high renewal rates with domain, with hostings, and uh, specifically with hosting that have created a website. Because we have also to, to say that there was many registrations with hostings, but they finally didn't create a work, a work a functional website. That projects haven't been renewed, but the ones that have web constructors activated and other kind of websites created, they are mostly renewing. So this year, not, not as good uh, for new registration, but very good for renewals. Well, it's, it's very nice. So it means that people, people massively start going to the web and uh, it's very nice that, they, that they're going to hosting and they buy domains that they do not go to maybe Facebook, Instagram or other, exactly. other platforms. So, so yeah. people still need the websites and and as I see only one issue that people sometimes were very positive, they bought domain, they bought hosting, but they maybe didn't finish the website. Exactly, that was also a problem, but it's normal. There was a increase of registration that was not normal for and, year and over year. As you, as you use a builder and you use it for the website builder for a long time, just, uh, uh, just a question, do people uh, use a website builder grading website and they still prefer web design studio, so it's mixed? I think that now with the new type of customer that we can say the people that normally doesn't work with websites, I, I think that they are with the period of uh, the, with the pandemic, they want to do it by themselves and they have that time to do it. So we have seen an increase of all the kind of webs, uh, website builder that can help them to do it. And they don't need to contract a website developer. I think that we have seen also an increase of that kind of services. Yeah. And also uh, maybe do we have any like perspectives, any prognosis for 2022? Of course, the, the pandemic can go slower, the pandemic can increase with new, with new, I don't know, with new elements, but uh, what is your opinion about your services? Just it slowly grows, so people more, more switch to the website builder to create website by themselves, or maybe people uh, just keep their business. What, what, what do you think about 2022? I think that we will keep growing, but not as much as the first year of the pandemic, but the the tendency will be that keep growing because we have also seen that many public relations of, for example, uh, the country out of our city are now asking us, do they need help to uh, educate the, the companies of the city to what they need? What do they need to have a website? We are now having many questions about that and we want to keep helping them to help the company from all the, the, uh, the Spain country to know, to, so, so they know what they need. And what they need is a domain, uh, a hosting, a website builder, and SSL certificate. 
So I think that we will keep growing, not as much as the pandemic, but the growth will be there. And, in, this, and the, the yeah. important thing will be the renewals that I think that will be keep growing also. But it's logically, some people just mm. close their businesses. Some people go online and because of a limited quantity of people. Possibly it's naturally that mm. you have rapid growth and then people extend. Yeah, only maybe one uh, very important key is that if people make a website, they will extend the domain name and the hosting. But if the website is empty, possibly drop rate will be higher. Exactly. Yeah. We want to educate the people to, even if they have a business that is working, they also need a website. With a, uh, with a website, it can be an easy website with only some text explaining what the, the company is and where is the address. It's enough, but they need it now. <laughs> maybe maybe you can share any uh, maybe life hacks or maybe some experiments that you did in 2021 or, or you plan to do in 2022. Just uh, maybe some life hacks so the smaller hosting companies can see you and maybe learn something from you. And we also share some our experience as well. By the way, you, what we saw in 2021 that many shared hosting companies, many small companies closed. So they out of competition. And as we see, when we talk to bigger brands, bigger brands are said, we grow faster. But when we talk with the smaller brands, all small brands really in trouble. <laughs> well, uh, first of all, here is important for our part to say that we don't have a sales department. So we don't work specifically with promotion. We trust more on having, can I say, a good marketing team to show the benefits of our company showing the benefits in social media, in a blog, having webinars and that kind of stuff. Because we don't only want to grow in registrations or new customers. That's not the most important part of, for, for, to our business. What we want is to keep the ones that are, that are already with us. So we don't focus mainly on grow, grow and grow. So we want to keep the customers because if we keep them, they can buy more, they renew. So we have a focus on that kind of part. And I think that that's important. Even if you are a little, a little hosting, share hosting company, to not focus only on become a bigger and bigger, to, but you need first to keep your customer that you have. So they are happy. I think that that's a very important thing that many companies don't work with. So you have the you have a website builder, offer the customers, show the customer that you have that you have it that they can build the website with you. That's so they don't need to go to another part. That kind of thing I think is very important, and many companies doesn't work with that. Uh -huh. and as I understood, you focus on keeping customers and providing them best ever support. As I understood, yes, because exactly. sales cost too much in this industry. So we focus more on keeping our customers. And if your customers are happy, they will talk with others. They will post the opinion. And then other customers that are not customer right now, other people will see it and they will try you. And that's the, the a, a way to keep growing with a good base. Nice. It's, it's very nice. And we start doing free service, but free service only for people who have money. So... We provide free service, but only for people who have domain. If you have domain, it means like you have some money or, or, or who buys domains or who buys a plan. Of course, they provide a lot of things, but uh, we stop any ads just, uh, and we see that lots of people do it, doing it. Yeah. And we also see that big companies, big companies that like hundred plus people, they have marketing departments just to do something. They said, yes, we spend more than we get, but we need to do something. So it's better. Mm -hmm. We still can advertise, so small companies are able to advertise. <laughs> and by the way, about world trends, right now, just right now, our Kazakhstan servers goes down. Do you know because of what? Ja Kazakhstan, we have server in Kazakhstan. It goes down just because whole country goes down. <laughs> and also about one more trend, we uh, this year announced uh, Domainity. I will also send you the link and also show it here. The idea that... Uh, it's like a domain domain level in the country. How many domains per thousand capital? So oh. it's very, very nice trend and I like that people love it. I, I think that in the future, it will be more and more important to have to have the possibility to give to the customers tools so they themselves can build the websites. So it's very important to, 
the companies of hosting companies have that kind of services in their their portfolio so they can help their customers build their website <laughs> so thank you chavi so thank, thank you very you much for, Philip. For, for, for communication see you soon i hope <laughs> yeah Hi, Eugene. Hello. Hey, Philip. Couldn't you shortly represent what trends uh, have you seen in 2021? Just what is the biggest trends that you feel in your industry or maybe in telcos? So it, it was a weird start, right? With the uh, COVID situation globally and all that stuff. And unless, uh, like at the beginning, we've seen kind of a short term recline in terms of. Uh, new websites and new customers but that was for the first uh, for the first months of of the year right uh and then um it it just exponentially growth uh it, there was an exponential growth just because people were moving to digital because they understood that neither this year covid is not going anywhere right so uh, they started to move digital and um this is like where we were limited by the number of people that we have uh, at our company to deliver our services. So it was mostly capped by, by like uh, our ability to deliver new websites rather than uh, anything else. And so you said there, exp exponential, exponential growth is was at the beginning of the year, in the middle or? Uh, it was in the second quarter of the year. Um, just basically, it's probably based on the geography where we, where we operate and it's mainly Mexico. Mm -hmm. And uh, this expo it, it was like a slow start, exponential growth for three months and then a steady growth simply because it was limited to our ability to deliver new websites. So basically operationally, we were not able, based on our business model, we were not able to overcome and hire more people just to deliver more. Uh, well, just more as was website. related with, with bigger restrictions in, uh, in this Latin region? Or... Um, it, it was related to the fact that uh, we believe that it was related mostly to the fact that unlike, I don't know, like if you compare it to Europe and I reside myself, I'm, I'm, I'm in Romania. Right, mm -hmm. and if you compare the restriction that we had here in Romania and the restriction that we had there in Mexico, is that like there were more strict. Those restrictions are um, are still there. Some of those restrictions are still there. People are not yet back in the office, uh, even if even though here in Romania or in Europe we see that people are getting back into the office slowly. Right, um, there like the situation was more dramatic. So I feel like people were trying to do something. And usually we work with uh, small companies and those companies struggled even more, right? Because they were trying everything. Like, because for some of them, this was the whole business, like selling things at the corner of the street. And they, when they got shut down, they simply tried to figure out what they're going to do because this was a family business, a family-run business, mostly it like- was for 100 two, It was 100% of their income, yes. Exactly. So uh, this is where so they people, tried- people start massively everything. go to telecoms, buy domains and create websites, yes? Something like that. Uh, so basically people start, were going to, to telecom. Uh, they were connecting to, to the internet. They were buying new packages. They were upgrading their packages. That will include a website, a domain, uh, e-commerce or uh, email and everything that's needed to get set up ready um, online. And what is your prognosis for 2022? So um, if we don't screw that up uh, in the sense that uh, we are now actively trying to hire new people is for deliver better service, but we also want to uh, automate part of our operations and part of our processes where we will... Um, you know, mainly try to create or generate a website, a starting website for those customers, like in order to shortcut or make slower turnaround times, like because we are delivering a website uh, for our customers in five days and probably it will be um, useful if I kind of um, tell you a little bit more about our business model, how we operate and uh, basically you can the way we hack. describe, yeah. You can shortly yeah. describe, yeah. 
uh, how we hacked into 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 this and how we are different from the others. So basically, we value two things. First is we understand that most of our customers cannot build their website. And second is even if they do, they still require support from someone who is better prepared for that. So our team is uh, consists of designers, technical people, and support engineers that will basically deliver a website for you. And uh, usually, in like the first version of the website is delivered and ready to be published within five to seven days, right? So, um, and we stay close with those people to review the changes and to pub- and we basically do everything for them. They outsource all, all of their website builder uh, website building to us. So this being said, like uh, there is a cap of how many websites we can deliver. So in order to increase that, we either hire more people, which becomes more or difficult in terms of operations to manage, or we try to automate the process. And we've been working like together, and you probably know, uh, we've been building some stuff around automating the website creation. Uh, and with your technical team, we've kind of built an API to help us um uh, automate the website creation. So basically our efforts this year will be towards moving towards automation for website creation. And I'm not telling you that we will fully automate the website creation. We will shortcut uh, and we want to shortcut and reduce the number of days needed to deliver a website to two or three days, which means we will be deliver we'll be able to deliver twice as many websites with the same people that we have to. Our team today uh, on uh, that's that's managing all this is around 60 people. 60 technical mm-hmm. people with 10 designers that uh, are delivering this web- website. Mm-hmm. Well, very nice, very good organized process and just uh, very curious uh, that you like, you use our product absolutely differently than others. So just- uh, <laughs> Yeah, really I would good. assume that. And as I, as I understood, the, like your main life hacks, this was my question, my li- next question, what is your like uh, sales life hacks and, uh, and et cetera. So I understood that r- right now, you now have like, you are just over upkeep and you just, your maybe main proposition for this year, maybe main life hacks will be just in uh, optimization. Yeah, your process optimization. Exactly. So what we've seen is that we can deliver uh, a certain amount of websites a year Mm -hmm. and that's not capped by the sales. That's mm-hmm. capped by the our technical abilities to deliver mm-hmm. those, as as I have already mentioned, and that's exactly um, our our goal is to increase and optimize the way we are delivering website to increase these numbers. But mainly, um, why it actually works this way is that um, we are working with telcos, right? And um, it's not uh, we don't sell per se because uh, like. We mainly ter- train uh, telco sales representatives, and we have a process that, uh, and this is kind of inside information and what they're yeah. doing inside is that we are working with telcos and we are working with uh, their sales departments and their uh, leadership teams to kind of prepare all the sales speech. And we work with them and we train them how to sell our products. So basically when someone goes there and proposes an internet package for someone, they are getting uh, the right speech, let's say, for the right person and trying to identify, like we have a a couple, a a process that helps Telco identify which products should they push to a specific customer, depending on their profiling and audit of their company. So basically we are training their sales representatives to sell our products. And uh, that's basically how, how it works. And uh, having the leverage that Telco would have where they have like hundreds of thousands for, for tens of thousands for a smaller Telco, hundreds of thousands for a mid-sized Telco or millions uh, for, for a bigger one. I mean, you, you have the numbers to play with and like getting this information to, to enough kind of people and when it's well-organized um, in terms of speech and in terms of value proposition, then um, that definitely helps a lot. And we rely on what we can do and not what Telco can do. And we never kind of say, Telco will figure out on their own what they're going to do and how they're going to sell. Instead, like we work together with them and with their uh, marketing departments to understand. Uh, Do do, do you know there are a lot of different uh, uh, year recognitions? For example, uh, a lot of people use like Chinese year, like Tiger year. 
there are also in Russian, they have their own culture, they have their own signs and their own uh, uh, like date when the year starting and finished. And I think we need to think something like uh, IT year when IT year starts. I don't know. <laughs> maybe <laughs> with the date 256 and maybe the, the, like, uh, the sign of IT year, like, uh, you know, like, uh, so your sign for the IT year should be like uh, optimization or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> so, this, so 2022 will be for your optimization. Optimization. Year. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, for me, like uh, on, on this kind of note, uh, for me, 2022 is exactly as 2021. It's like delivering, delivering and over delivering again. So uh, for me, um, it's mostly like putting that effort into getting th that many websites, as many websites as we can to those people that are already waiting. So that's kind of... Just, just a question uh, for you. We're thinking about uh, making a product to be so, so provide you ability to edit the website for several people at the same time. Is it like needed feature? For example, when several designers can edit website at the same time, what do you think about this? Is it like it's like optional or it it will speed up your process? Um, I'm I'm not very well aware about like the 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 details of the operations and how the websites are delivered. Um, what I know though is um, changing the website for for us at least. Like we take a personal approach with every customer. So uh, each of our support engineers uh, will um, will try to understand every particular case. So in this case, like we are not building on a template basis which is like we don't want to edit it like it's not not a template that we are using so basically with this personal approach i don't think we are changing websites all together at once um but there are some aspects to it like for example um you are you're having an e-commerce update right or you're having an engine update instead of going through like i don't know 20,000 of websites that are already published, we need a way to update all of them, all of them to the latest tech, bug fixes uh, and all that stuff. So that would be really useful in terms of, uh, of a feature or like, for example, there is an analytics plugin, right? That we want to push to all the websites. And I'm talking more about like these technical aspects, but basically, uh, with an analytics plugin, we want to publish it on all our websites. And when that's tens of thousands of websites, that becomes a challenging issue to do. So uh, something like that would be worth uh, touching or approaching. And we can talk about this separately uh, whenever you feel suitable. Yeah. So thank you, Eugene. Ever if you're online, we also have limited time, not only uh, you know, flying events, but online events, we also have some li limited time. So we'll talk with you later about uh, this optimization idea that you talked deeply about everyone. But thank you for your time. Thank you that you joined. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. So hi, Wayne. Hi, how are you doing? I'm nice. By the way, I never saw your surname. Your surname is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you. What about 2021? Can you share some trends? What happening in Africa or South Africa? What well, you... the last two years have been very interesting due to COVID. So South Africa went into lockdown in March in 2020. Uh, and we had sort of five, four to five months of really serious lockdown. Uh, our president thought that uh, if we had a lockdown, we will flatten the curve. And in that time, the economy took a very big hit. So what was happening is that a lot of companies retrenched, got rid of, shut down, and staff became uh, no longer employed. And we had a large unemployment. In fact, South Africa's probably got the highest unemployment ratio in the world. Um, but what happened for us, we saw a very interesting trend is that all those that became unemployed suddenly realized they needed to try and do something. 
and they registered domains, got on web hosting, built websites, um, and tried to start new businesses to get online. And that trend continued for most of uh, 2020. Obviously, 2021 came along, and the trend slowed down dramatically because a lot of companies that had shut down or had retrenched different staff suddenly started re-employing and people realized suddenly it wasn't so easy to run a business, start a business at any time, let alone COVID times. So those trends have slowed down the last uh, couple of months, but the traditional businesses that were there are reopening again. And I'm very positive for 2022. Oh, what uh, positive, uh, what it means? Uh, for example, uh, just have a, a talk right now with Don Dominio. They said, we in 2020, a lot of, we have huge growth because everybody starts switching uh, online because they have no choice. Okay. But in 2021, growth is slower, but all these people, oh, they still uh, continue uh, their subscriptions. And uh, right now we have a uh, short meeting with Conibit. He also, he also said that ever 2021 was very active because in Mexico there were regulations and people that were able to sell on the street, now it's forbidden for them totally. They need to do something. So they start yeah. going online. So what is your like ideas so for 2022? Uh -huh. So 2021, as you call it, uh, very nicely said, was very active. Mm -hmm. uh, 20, um, and even 2020, 2021 were very active. I think we will still experience uh, good growth in 2022. Uh, we've got a lot of things planned for the company, uh, a lot of new product launches, a lot of product deviations and changes. I think we're adapting to the market and what the market's looking for. Um, and uh, hopefully 2022 is a very good year for us. And uh, maybe you can share some life hacks. Or so you said you have new products. Maybe if it's not a secret, you can maybe share what, you, what kind of new products. You said you would like to be more adaptive. So it so, kind so of as far as life hacks go, they're sort of two different areas where a lot has been learned over the years. One is obviously our own internal um, things, uh, which I continue to tell uh, my staff. And I think the first one is know who your customers are. Um, that's one of the most important things. You can't sell a product or solution to a customer that doesn't want it. So you've got to know who your customers are. And I think that's something that not only do I tell my team, but we tell the customers as well. And then make sure your communication is directed at customers. Um, if you're missing the customer, if you're directing your communication over the customer's head, they're never going to look at your products or your solutions. And interestingly enough, I actually always tell my staff, smile on the telephone. And it must sound incredibly silly to say smile on the telephone. But when someone smiles on the phone, the person on the other side actually can hear it. They actually can hear that you're positive, you're happy, and it makes them happy. It's one of the most amazing things. If you're smiling on the other side of the telephone, the client can hear it. I just, uh, I just heard the statistics that it's about 1,500 emotions that people can recognize through voice. Can you imagine? Yes, absolutely, and, absolutely. And absolutely. technically, yes, technically, there were also a study I also heard about that that when people smile and call, so there are better conversion for purchases when people smile during the call. Here we see each other, and you hear those emotions. When you're on the telephone, you're not technically seeing each other, but you can still hear those emotions. So. Then obviously communication is key. And I always say to my team, customers can go to any provider. We need to give them such awesome customer service 
that we become the only provider. So I think those are a couple of like hacks for my own team. You know, and then I say to customers when when we say to when we speak to customers and we talk about things, is customers always have the wrong perception of a website, what they do and what they want to do and what they believe that believe they need. And I think one of the most important things you can ever tell a customer is your website is not for you. Your website is for your customer and it needs to be directed to your customer. So if you've got a very technical person who's your customer, then share technical knowledge. If you've got a person that doesn't know the industry and is just getting into the industry, share the basics. But the owner of a business knows everything about the business. And nine out of 10 times, the customer doesn't know that. And the customer wants to know from the basics. So you've got to design and build your website for your customer. Uh, what is about uh, marketing in your countries? Is it very expensive? These clicks and the customer, like customer acquisition cost, is it so high? Maybe I'm not asking specific numbers, but uh, what, how you look at this Google ads, Facebook ads, is it still profitable or? Because right oh. now, Don Dominia said, we, we pay 10, 15 dollars per click yeah. for the main, so, for the minutes. Correct. So Google ads are very expensive. Um, there's obviously competition on all sides. Uh, for different products and domains, web hosting, cloud services and solutions. Um, but I think you've got to have a combination of various different advertising from a direct online advertising to brand building to informational ads. So the moment you can start doing that, you're building up the brand and not only looking for a direct sale. Google is very good on the direct sale But yes, uh, as your Mexican colleague mentioned, uh, the Google ads are very expensive and sometimes really not worth it. Um, when you look at the cost per click and then against the cost, cost per conversion um, and what you're actually making on a domain, uh, it's prohibitively expensive. So logically, Google will, t will, will cost as much as somebody stupid people can pay. So you completing yeah. your economy, you need to, you maybe you, know, you should understand you need economy and everything else. But while these competitors spend as much money as they can, there will be the maximum price for Google. So yeah. if you can pay for customers thirty dollars, but if your competitors pay forty dollars, it means that Google will cost forty dollars. And when the highest level stop, Google price stops as well. But now, unfortunately, you always get someone that will pay higher. Yeah, so it will be idiots because they will not uh, turn yeah. money back. But uh, I totally agree with you and agree with everybody that I talked today. Uh, we need to do something long term, like build a brand that slowly expand and we need to, to, to make this process not slow, but fast. So Correct. every business, as Google said, every business is uh, spreading by people. Like it's Facebook, it's Google something. The only one thing is uh, how fast is. For example, every every business grow as fast as people are talking about this. I think there is potentially good growth in South Africa. Um, it's not going to be easy growth, but I say I think there is potentially good growth uh, for the market for the industry. Um, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's the same worldwide. I think we're going to have the same challenges that the US are having, that Europe are having. Uh, I think those challenges will just be coming through to us in South Africa uh, three months, six months later. So we can learn from what's happening in the, in the US and Europe and hopefully uh, maybe not uh, hit the same uh, speed bumps as they are at that point in time. And also I really wish you to become local Amsterdam. So all Botswanian, all Zambian shared hosting companies yeah. should buy hosting from you because you are like leading, you are stable, you have good support, you have good servers because now all these guys, they buying from America or buying okay. from the Netherlands. And I think yeah, it's a huge you. opportunity for you and uh, really wish you all, all the best in this, uh, this thing.
Fantastic. So, Thank you very much. And to yourselves as well. Hi, Munir. Hi, Philip. Good to see you again. Uh, couldn't you share a little bit information about trends in 2021? Maybe in 2020 okay. and, and how, you, how you just meet these years and the, so how market feels? And... Sure, sure, absolutely. Uh, so uh, at aeserver.com, we've been uh, you know going through a huge uh, year and year growth. Uh, and I think the whole industry has been going uh, through through a growth, which has been fueled partially, you know, or initially by the pandemic. But of course, the trends continued. And since you are asking about the trends, uh, we continue uh, to see more and more people um, going online, establishing their own businesses, uh, trying to set up, you know, a new startup, if you can say like that, uh, or someone uh, trying to establish a side hustle, working somewhere, but they are thinking of. Of, you know establishing their own business so we keep on seeing this trend which started in the pandemic and uh, it, it just continued it's, it just keeps on going uh, people i think are energized they are fueled they see that companies worldwide are uh, going through through such transformation and changes and they just want to jump on this you know bandwagon and uh, uh, also monetize so yeah and uh, i think uh, you're also asking what we're see what, what we forecast for 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 the for this year, um, I think the trend will continue. Just how uh, people use and also yeah. how they use they like use they buy domains by shared hosting or they it's more mostly by VPS so it's like business going online fastly or people just expanding through online or. So traditionally, I mean, as as a domain registrar and hosting company, we see two type of clients. Uh, so the the entry level clients are those clients who just book a domain name, they reserve a name. Uh, I don't know. So sometimes they, they come up with a name and they just want to make sure it's their name and, and, and they just plan the business later. So this is the first type of the clients. Um, the second type is that uh, we have established businesses that are uh, aware of what they need. They know exactly what objective they have. So either they come with a, an existing domain name or they book a new domain name they, by web hosting. They... Uh, get more technology solutions like VPS, dedicated servers. So, you know, as you know, we are a local hoster in Dubai. So we've got infrastructure in Dubai and uh, people are seeking to have their data closer to their clients and they, they book such services. So, yeah. Um, yes, I was just saying, so I think the trends will go on, will continue. Uh, there are a few in instances where we saw that the trend, you know, like there was like a little bit of... Uh, of uh, maturity in the market or saturation in the market where, uh, you know, kind of the signs, the signups plateaued and uh, the number of, uh, you know, signups or domain names in the zone was equal. But then uh, I was just looking at the data of last year in, in, the, in the Gulf region. So I would say from August onwards, um, there was again another, another boom, another cycle, maybe perhaps again of all these talks about the pandemic and the new variants, I don't know. I don't like to talk much about COVID, but uh, it's, it's played a huge part in this, you know, uh, technology boom that we're facing. So I feel this is going to continue. More and more people are realizing that there is lots of benefits to be online, online. not just on social media. Example, in our region in the Gulf, lots of uh, big companies only have social media presence, like Instagram or, or, or TikTok. They completely forget uh, about using a website, but they later on realize that their competition is having great web presence they are paying for pay-per-click ads they are ranking higher in google and other search engines so they have to make sure they capture the clients on all the platforms so these are the type of clients uh, we see literally we have big clients coming up to us and we are surprised they don't even have their brand name booked across all the zones they might have some domain that was booked 10 years ago which was only used for emails and that's it and everything else because they are an offline business i'm not talking about online business i'm talking about offline businesses who are yet to move online and this is where we are seeing uh, or, or forecasting a trend you also mentioned earlier about new region started yeah so you sell domain now in new regions but it's not uh, not for for the world it's only for local people uh well so we we actually became a registrar in bahrain so the national domain name of bahrain is dot bh the domain name existed for, for, for many, many years, but it was following a very old uh, system, like just I mentioned uh, earlier. However, uh, they've overhauled the registry. 
Uh, now it's basically a registry register model and the domain name at this stage, I mean, we are in January of 2022 right now, it's uh, open only for the local citizens and uh, residents and the businesses based in Bahrain. However, later this year, it will go in a global general availability phase. So any person from any country in the world can book a domain name. And uh, do you feel like uh, influence of website builders as we, we just, in, in our team, when we need to sell our product, we also show uh, our competitors, like, like I don't know, GoDaddy and like big, big ones. And uh, we see like website builder in these websites were always at the bottom. So maybe three, five years ago, it's like came like, 50 by 50 so half half website is like selling domains half website website builder now we see that like go daddy putting website builder to all the page so it means like Correct. the importance important of this technology should also influence your market i don't yeah absolutely absolutely i mean again so let, let, let's be honest big organizations they set uh, some standards in the market and of course when you mentioned go daddy doing that uh Lots of hosters and, and, and you know other companies follow this trend. Uh, we actually also experimented with the website builders, and we we do sell website a website builder. It, it's a very successful product for us. Uh, especially again, it, it all builds up on this trend which has been set by the whole global pandemic. This work from home, start your own business, uh, you know, think outside of the box. This is exactly what's been happening, and uh, I think. The website builder itself is a very beautiful product. I mean, you are technically, uh, well, as hosters, we are already a SaaS-based company, but a website builder even more complements that because you're basically leasing out a software which allows the client to, to use a website builder to build a website, and then they are set for the period, or whatever period they want to use the website for. So it's basically uh, a very easy product to sell, it's, it's very easy to convert clients in case you offer a freemium uh, solution. And it's a very sticky product because as long as the clients have a website running, uh, the business is running, there is really no reason for them to, to take a step back and, I don't know, just shut down the website because it's just there. And uh, speaking technically, uh, for, for, for the web hosting companies, it's, it's, it's a sort of a one-time uh, like support to the clients because initially they will have questions how to use how to please assist me how to do this and this and later on the clients learn uh, and especially if you have a tutorial like in your website builder when you have a tutorial uh, that assists and walks through the client that said the clients don't even ask any questions anymore so that's the beauty of the product L look listen to not talk about price price you can always change the price and become the cheaper uh for example, TD server, we are we are never or expensive. We are never about uh, the cheapest price. We never claim to be the cheapest or whatever. We are about quality. So you know the, the good old saying it's 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 quality uh, over quantity. So, however, in, in our industry overall, I think ninety nine percent of the companies are different. It's a mass scale business, so it's uh, quantity over quality. However, being a local provider, uh, this is how we try to you know tackle the market by being very close to clients and being vocal to them. I, I think that uh, support will be the trend of 2022 because everybody talking about this and also it's, it makes your marketing more effective, your sales more effective because uh, getting to customers, getting uh, very expensive, only one way is when your existing uh, clients recommend to new ones and they can do it only if they're very satisfied and, and better if they're over satisfied. <laughs> True, true. This is the best marketing indeed. Word of mouth uh, is, is, is a very, very overlooked uh, subject by some companies. However, it's very important. And, you know, it's the most important time right now to gather your online reviews, to use all those you know, platforms to, to get, you know, the, the stars rating and, and, and show off the, the stars rating on your, on your website and your social media everywhere else. This is really something which, which helps, uh, you know, create a sort of, you know, a community around your brand or business, and this attracts uh, fellow clients. Okay. Thank you, Munir, for your time. Okay. See you. Thank you so much.